Okay, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about separating mixtures. Um, I guess the key point here is that since mixtures have their particles clumped together into larger particles or larger groupings, um, we don't need to use chemical means to separate them, but often we can use physical means. I'm going to talk about two, uh, two types here and then um, and then, you know, there's a whole variety of other things that you could do to separate mixtures that I won't be talking about. So the first one, probably the most common, is to use a filter. If the um, solute particles, or I guess you wouldn't really call them solute particles, but if the, um, the material that you want to remove, the particles are large enough in it, then you can just use a, a thing with gaps. And so if my particle is this big, and my other particles are this big, then the little particles can fit through the holes easily. And the big particles, if they try to get through the holes, get stuck. And as a result, the solvent hopefully will pass through the holes, although it doesn't, I guess, really matter if it's solvent or solute that's passing through the holes. And then, in the other hand, the other material will not, and you get them separated. This is what like your pool filter would be doing or your coffee filter or a variety of other filters. Um, I mean a lint trap and a dryer. So this is a really common way of separating out materials, especially if the particle size between them is uh, significantly different. Then you can set the hole size such that the big particles cannot get through and the little particles can. And as a result, you can separate those two things. This definitely will not work for solutions because the particle size for a solution is down to an individual particle of the material, so you can't make a filter with holes that are that small. And it probably won't work for colloids because, again, the um, particles that are suspended in the liquid, like in milk or something like that, are probably too small for you to effectively filter them out. So uh, this really works well if you have particles of different size. Another idea, and this will work well for colloids, um, is a centrifuge. The idea here is you take your solution and you have the individual particles that have not sedimented or settled out of the thing, and you spin it at a really high speed. This pushes the particles outwards with a, something like a force of gravity, like if when I had a normal suspension, the force of gravity would eventually settle the particles out. Here, the spinning motion creates, um, creates acceleration, and that acceleration requires force. And if there's no force to cause those particles to accelerate along with the solution as it moves around in a circle, what they end up, being do what they end up doing is being pushed to the edge of the circle. Just like you get pushed to the edge of a car when you make a sharp turn, um, and as a result, you can get all the particles to collect there. You can then decant and just pour the top part of the solution off to get a solution that doesn't have any of the, um, I don't know what you want to call those, impurities in it. Or uh, you can do whatever you need to do to get what is now a settled suspension out the particles that were suspended but are now settled, separated from the solvent particles. This works well for colloids because the whole thing is that the particles for colloids are too big to naturally settle out of the suspension. Here, it's almost like creating an additional force of gravity that will cause them to settle out much faster. Depending on the properties of the material that you're trying to separate, I mean, maybe you could use magnetism if some of the particles are magnetic and some of them are not, or some other methods that would be used, like would be things like fractional distillation, where you have some materials with different boiling points from other materials so you slowly heat the heat the material up and some of it will evaporate before other ones or before other parts of it but this is just a couple examples of how you can use physical means to separate mixtures